dragon. Is this where the damn drumming and the music kicks in? Yeah. <laughs> Body, hello, and welcome to On the Pipe Podcast, both physically and spiritually, and wherever you're listening at. This is On the Pipe Podcast, brick and mortar. We're out of my uh, spare bedroom. We're off of the green screen. We've got a real wall behind me because we are in a real building with a real studio. And uh, today, oh, you can see my papers right here. Today is April 17th. 2023 years after zero and we got some racing to talk about we got some off-road riding to talk about we got all sorts of stuff going on but we are live from the on the pipe podcast headquarters we can say it now 119 main street lowell north carolina that is where i'm sitting at right now so if you want to send a studio warming gift 119 main street lowell north carolina you know what i mean no i'm just kidding but uh no i'm stoked i'm pumped i have spent a good portion of my life in these walls that you see me. This wall behind me used to be like pretty much a uh, a black. And it took four coats of paint to get it to look like this. But yeah, we're here. We're rolling. I've Like I said, sorry for missing out on the show last week. If you've ever tried to move a business, it's tough. There's a lot that goes into it. So been dealing with all that, been putting it all together. But I couldn't wait anymore. First of all, we got to do some podcasts this week. I'm not going to lie, I almost uh, almost babied out and I almost did a, a recording, just audio version only from the house, but it's like, you know what, man, I've been spending all of my time up in this studio, up the street from my house, trying to get this thing ready. You guys can't see it, but off camera, I got all sorts of stuff to make t-shirts, uh, sweatshirts, uh, shorts, sweatpants, bags, tote bags, wherever you want. It's all right here. And let me tell you something, I got... A regular size door over here. I got a regular size door over here, and none of this stuff is regular size. So all this stuff had to be brought over here, taken apart, carried in with a bunch of people, put back together. Like I said, we did a lot of painting, did some building over here. We got some walls over here. We got all sorts of stuff going on. So if you're ever in there, come by, check it out. Be more than happy to have you. But that being said, I could have taken the easy way out. I could have went and just recorded it at my house and called it a day. But I was like, man, we've been putting all this work in, in the studio. Let's do it. So, is the studio ready to be broadcasted on the internet? Well, no, not really, as you can tell. Do I have a set decorated, ready to go? Well, no, I don't, as you can tell. Do I have the lighting figured out to where the lighting looks right and I look like a normal human being and we're not going to have any issues? Well, no. No, it's not. We still got fluorescent light bulbs, all sorts of stuff going on. But... Are we here to have a good time? Are we here listening on the pipe podcast? Absolutely. So thank you for being here and thank you for joining with me. That is going to end it for my rant about this place. But man, I'm I'm super excited. I'm looking around this place, looking at stuff that I have to do. But on one hand, I see a laundry list full of items, and on the other hand, I see a lot of opportunity. And I'm excited about this space, and I'm excited about you all being here, and I'm excited about finally getting back to this weekend review with on the pipe podcast. So. That was a, a long way to say, hello, welcome, thank you for being here, thank you for listening. Um, this is where we're at, and hey, we're only going to build from here. I got to get more equipment to make this broadcast a lot better than what it is, got uh, high hopes for that. We got all sorts of stuff on the horizon, talking to people, getting people in studio, and I don't want to do the, the false promises because... If I say something on here, I have every intention of doing it. I got good intentions of doing it. But one thing leads to another, and it, and it doesn't happen. So sorry about not doing a show last week. Uh, we're going to keep it rolling, keep it moving. I, I'm going to try to do tons of shows this week. We might have our first ever in-studio guest lined up for Thursday, so be on the lookout for that. We got an OTP Tuesday coming at you tomorrow. Uh, might try to do – actually, no, I got a bunch of stuff to do on Wednesday. But Thursday – I think it's looking good. We got some uh, some stuff coming up at Hoosier 
in Indiana. So the next GNCC race, we're going to be doing a, um, a live show and a little bit of an extravaganza at the beta rig. So the factory beta rig, we will be doing a special version of on the pipe podcast. There we'll be talking to the team manager. We'll be talking to the mechanics. We'll be talking to the riders. We'll be talking to local business people in Indy and uh, we'll be talking to you. So stay tuned for more details on that. I'll let you know as soon as they come out. We want you to be there. We want you to be a part of it because that's the whole thing. We're, we're building it for the fans. And as you all know, Beta is the official manufacturer of On The Pipe Podcast. And so that's why we're putting this whole thing together to have a big extravaganza, live event, live podcast at the Beta Rig at, um, at the Hoosier coming up in a couple weeks. So um, Beta Motorcycles, as you all know, they've been family owned and operated since 1905. They manufacture the finest enduro trials and dual sport motorcycles that are known for their premium quality and rideability. Beta Motorcycles are the best looking bike on the market and they back it up with their superior performance. Head over to BetaUSA.com for more information on their available models or to find a dealer near you to get yours today. So I'm actually decked out in beta, beta gear today. I got my Beta shirt. I got my Beta team hat. We're representing. Um, it was just casting a shadow on my face, but I look like a homeless man right now, so that's why I had to have some type of hat on. But super stoked. Can't wait to uh, to do that stuff with Beta. I think it's going to be a good time, and we invite you to come over, join us, and hang out. Um, I will let you know a day, a time. I think it's going to be Friday, so we know a day. I'll let you know a time, and hopefully we'll have some swag to get away. We'll have some OTP stuff to give away. Might have some beta stuff to give away. But uh, regardless, we got some stories to tell. We got some people to talk to. And uh, we hope that you can join us out there. That being said, we do have some other stuff to talk about. This race series. Everyone has heard about it. Everyone asked me about it. I wish I had more answers. I wish I could go public right now and tell you everything that I know. But I don't quite know it all yet. We're trying to trying to sort through it. Once again, that is why we started later in the year, so we can work through these details. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of stuff that has to happen, but um, I said before, didn't know where it was at, didn't know where we were going with it. I say with confidence now, there will be Bite GP this year. Best in the East, we're going to do it. We got to go for it. You know what I mean? Everything's here. Everything's set up. Uh, Some other things happen behind the scenes, but... Not here to talk about that right now. We're going to keep it positive. This is a positive episode of OTP. So uh, be on the lookout. Bite GP. I, I've said it <laughs> a bunch of weeks. So once again, back to the empty promise thing. I'm going to try to give you information on it. Hopefully this week, if not next week, for sure. Because while we are starting late in the year, it is also time to uh, either poo or get off the pot, as they like to say. So we're uh, we're going to let you know got it coming up be on lookout hope to see you bite gp best in the east we're gonna find out who it is so uh other than that we got a lot of stuff going on a lot of racing going on this episode before we get started is brought to you as always in part by zach tussle at raymond james financial zach is a racer and a financial advisor that helps his clients win when it comes to retirement and financial planning um zach helps out a ton of racers pro racers amateur racers uh people that do podcasts and everyone in between and Zach Tussle can help you out with your financial planning or your retirement or however you want to do it. The best time to start was yesterday. Uh, The next best time to start is tomorrow, especially because I hope you got your taxes done because we're two days after tax day. Um, Reach out to Zach Tussle, financialadvisorsdenvernc.com or hit him up on social media. But if you do go to financialadvisorsdenvernc.com, you can fill out your information, get a free consultation just for listening to On The Pipe Podcast. Make sure you let him know where you heard about him at and he will let you know what he can do with your money to help you plan for your financial future. So now that we're a few minutes into this, I can't really, I don't have a way to see comments. Let me hold on. I'm pulling up my phone here. Let's see what we got. Do I hear all right? Do we? Uh, can you hear everything? Can you see everything? Zaphoid Beeblebrox. I'm sorry. I'm gonna get into the racing stuff. My bad. Uh, Dirt bike Bam. Appreciate it. We got a video live on YouTube of the thing. Share your link on a Facebook group. GNCC Racing Photos. Man, I've about had it with that GNCC Racing Facebook group. I get banned all the time. My posts get deleted all the time. I get strikes all the time. It's a no-fun zone. 
Seems like a lot of stuff is turning into a, a, a no fun zone here lately. But since I don't have any people yelling at me in the in the chat, I would imagine that you can hear me all right, that you can see me all right, and that we're uh, we're ready to move forward with this thing. So this past weekend, it was round five of the GNCC. Oh, first of all, let me give myself a plug. OTP screen printing. It's surrounding me right now as well. If you need t-shirts made, hit me up. We got uh we got a bunch of stuff on the horizon. We got some dirt bike companies. We got some other companies that are through dirt bike people. We got some ISDE shirts made. So every year, ISDE team members, they do some fundraisers. If you are an ISDE team member, excuse me, club team, trophy team, however you want to do it, and you're doing a fundraiser this year for the ISDE, I am doing special ISDE pricing. So it is ISDE specific to help you raise those funds, to help you raise the most money that you can. Um, I got some deals going on that go on top of it, but it is special pricing for ISDE riders. Um, and yeah, so that's the goal. I want to help riders out. We are riders advocates. We care about the riders over here at OTP. So um, hit up OTP screen printing. We will give you special ISDE pricing. And then um, I'm going to throw up Everyone who does gets their ISD shirts made through me, um, I'm going to throw those up on our website. So our online store for On The Pipe Podcast will make those available to people as well. So that way, just another avenue, another channel to, to sell your merchandise. Um, but yeah, so just going to do all we can to help out the ISDE team this year. Um, but yeah, so that's coming up on the horizon. But any businesses, any people, any brands, anything like that, we can also print your shirts, no problem. Um, we're going to be doing some some riding stuff here in a little bit that I'll be more than happy to, to share with everybody. But hit us up, OTP Screen Printing, at OTP Screen Printing, um, OTP Screen Printing at gmail.com. Shoot us a message on Instagram, send us an email, however you want to do it. Uh, I think that's all the ads out of the way. We got racing to finally talk about now that we're 13 16 minutes into this thing first of all start show off t's and p's to a couple riders we had a couple injuries actually there was quite a few injuries from what i understand throughout the the amateur ranks and, and everyone in between but um specifically lane michael went down with a shoulder injury so um man gutted for lane michael um we saw lane michael have a hell of a race at bigger buck he was out in front. He was looking good. He was doing good. And then ended up having a bike issue where he couldn't finish the race. So right there on the cusp but finally putting it all together and uh, doing what he knows he's capable of doing and ends up having a bike malfunction on him. He goes out obviously looking for redemption this weekend at Camp Coker. Um, man, I felt so bad. I was talking to Lane Michael on the starting line. There was about an hour delay before the racing got started. So went up talking to him. Hey, man, how you feeling? How are you doing? How's your shoulders? Um that kind of thing because because lane's had some injuries with his shoulders i've had similar injuries with my shoulder so mainly just catching up and and what he told me is that his shoulder felt the healthiest that it had been the strongest that it had been and then uh come to find out during the race he ended up crashing out and, and it, i think he posted on his socials that um that it was a shoulder injury so gutted to hear that gutted to hear that t's and p's out for lane michael and then uh good friend of the show a good buddy of mine ben nelko um he ended up getting hurt pretty bad he ended up getting taken to the hospital down there in florence um i i'll give that one some time uh, it's not my place to to say people's injuries if they publicly post them like i said i think lane posted on a story about what was hurt um but ben ended up Staying the night in the hospital, I went straight there after the race, hung out with him for a little bit, make sure that um, everything was all good and to get himself situated. But uh, T's and P's out for Ben. We went on a little bit of a, a rant, I think, in the, the last show that we did two weeks ago about just the work that he's put in, the effort that he's put in, and everything has just been bad luck after bad luck. I mean, uh, mechanicals throughout the season have plagued him, so he hasn't been able to – show what he's capable of he hasn't been able to get those results on paper he's ran up front in a lot of the races like you go look and he, i mean he's been up front he's been a contender he's gotten hole shots he's almost gotten hole shots and fallen but he's still riding up front or if not riding up front then riding with that lead pack and, and staying with him but doesn't get the opportunity to even see if he can put it all together um now obviously Gets a, a decent start and then all of a sudden moves up into the third place position. Running good this past weekend. Feeling good on the bike uh, from what he said. Liking the sand down there at Camp Coker. 
and uh, really putting together a really good race. And we're like, oh, is this going to be the effort that we know Ben is capable of? Um, he ends up coming into a field section, and I guess it was a spot where it split right around a, a tree, and he ended up going into the tree. Um, ended up being a pretty gnarly situation, especially out there in the woods. I know there was a lot of talk about um, life flighting him out of there. So I know the life flight option was the one being recommended, and it was the one on the table for him. Um, he ended up choosing to not – get in the, the life flight and take the ambulance to the hospital where he stayed the night, but, um, back on his way home now. So just gutted for him. Um, just cause all, all those same things that we talked about before with, with Trevor Bollinger getting hurt again, with Lane Michael getting hurt again, with Ben Nelko getting hurt now. Um, it stinks because those are guys that this is their livelihood. This is what they're doing for a living. And, this is like make it or break it years. It's a contract year for Bollinger. Um, Lane Michael, we saw that switch in the offseason where he kind of got left without a ride and had to put his own deal together. And so he's riding that gas gas but in a tent off to the side of the factory gas gas thing. So he's fighting to get back on a factory team. Ben joins this RM, ATV, MC, Tealy Energy team and is is there with – Stu Baylor with Bubs Tasha, with Ty Ely, with Todd Ely, who's been running that Tealy Energy Racing team for a while now and had that opportunity. But now all three of those guys are in such a bad – or not bad position, that's the, the wrong choice of words, but it's a, this is a performance-driven industry. Um, I, I think it's performance-driven on your name, image, and likeness, so your social media presence and, and how many people you can get in front of. And it's also obviously driven by results from racing as well. And so now you take these three guys that are fighting for those contracts, fighting for those rides, fighting for those factory salaries, if you will. And now the opportunity to get those good results is temporarily taken away. And not only is that temporarily taken away, but now you got to rush that injury and come back when you're not 100% because you're in fear of not getting paid. And then you're in bigger fear of not getting paid next year, not being able to get a deal. And so it, it kind of puts you in that never-ending position where you're riding injured, so you're not riding to the best of your ability. So, yeah, you're out on the track, but you're not getting the results that you're capable of. And you might not be the safest on the bike. If you can't hold on to the bike the way that you should, if you can't process it with a head injury the way that you should, um, I mean, if you can't squeeze the bike with your legs, if you can't hold the bike with your arms, like if you can't ride to your 100% potential, then you're not going to get paid, and then everyone's going to think, you stink because when they look at the results page it's not going to have a description of what happened to you during that race it's going to say seventh place it's going to say eighth place it's going to say dnf it's going to say fifth place and so it's, it stinks man um it's like like i said a never ending cycle you got to heal to be fast but you also got to ride to get paid so it's whenever you see injuries like this happen um it just it just does stink. So T's and P's out to Lane Michael. T's and P's out to Ben Nelko. Um, just a couple riders that ended up uh, on the injured column this this past weekend. So um, thinking about those guys. Also, what in the world was in the water at Camp Coker this weekend? Everywhere you look, everyone's got an upset stomach. Everyone's got. Issues going on, everyone's puking on themselves, everyone's stopping in the middle of the race to take a deuce. So I don't know what was going on in the water, but man, I've heard about more stomach bugs and more issues going on this past couple weeks than I think I ever have. And um, a lot of the riders succumb to that. I know a lot of the riders race reports. So like talking to guys before the race, kind of get the feeling of what's going on. Um, some of the guys talked to him during the race, like Stu Baylor did that interview, letting everyone know how he was feeling. But then the guys post after the race, like I'm, I'm thinking of four guys off the top of my head that all were sick during that race. And uh, I was sitting there thinking about I was like, man, what in the world got into everybody's water or something down there? You know what I mean? So it was a little bit of an unusual race, just uh, the, the way it all went down, the way that people were kind of falling off, like guys would be up front and then they start fading without really an explanation why until we found out all that stuff afterwards. But um, yeah, just, just what a race, what a day. Uh, first of all, we want to talk about the 120th overall rider on the day down there at Camp Coker. And you may say, Tyler, why are we talking about the 120th overall rider down there at Camp Coker? James Howard, 
Finished 120th overall. I do not know James Howard. If you know James Howard, tell him, good job. Give him a pat on the back. Give him a high five. Do what you need to do. Because James Howard was racing the 150A class, and the reason that we're bringing it up is everywhere that you looked, people were talking about how tough this track is, how gnarly this track is, how beat up the track is, how deep the track is, how hot it was, how hard it was to finish this race. James Howard spent more time on that track than anybody else on that track. Three hours, 38 minutes, and 43 seconds. Almost four hours on that track did James Howard spend. So when you think about the rough, the gnarly, the the tracks like that, and think about, so Florida. Florida got cut a lap early. Florida was under the rule allotted two hours and 45 minutes. So... It was really a whole lap short, and we saw how brutal that track was. This race went over three hours, so three hours and four minutes was the overall winner, Grant Baylor, but three hours and 38 minutes is the the longest time out on the track, Um, and that was James Howard, 120th place, eighth place in the 150A class. Uh, It might not be eighth place. That might have just been the eighth row to take off, but you get the point. That was gnarly. Double checking. And yeah, he was for sure the longest on the track. But yeah, just want to point that out. So kudos to you. Riding around for almost four hours out on that track. Um, But as everyone knows, you, you heard it everywhere. You heard it in the interviews. You heard it on the live stream. You heard it around the track. You heard it on the podiums. You heard it everywhere. Five different winners in five rounds of GNCC racing. That is absolutely bonkers. As long as I've been involved in the sport and following it, I don't remember a time that there's been five different winners in the first five rounds. In fact, I remember a time where it was the the Caleb era and everyone was racing for second place and we <laughs> that was that was the thing going into it. Like, okay, Caleb's gonna win, who's gonna get second? But now we're showing up at these races like who on earth is going to get the win? Who's gonna who who who's gonna be on the podium? Who's gonna get the win? Who's gonna have the points lead? Because the points lead has changed every round. Every round. Going into round three, it was tied, which also is a change because Stu won the first round, got the points lead. Ben won the second round. And then that tied up the points lead. So then they went into the third round, and it changed again after the third round. And then it changed again, and now it changed again. Stu came in as the uh, the points leader, and now he will leave third place in points after just one weekend. That's going to put Ben Kelly back in the points lead, 113 points. Craig DeLong, three points back in that number two spot. So Craig with another strong ride on the podium, but we're going to get that get to that here in a second. But what a year of racing what a sight it is what a a pleasure it is to watch the racing happen that is going on this year five different winners in five different rounds so do we think that someone's going to get a repeat win at round number six up in indiana or do we think that a sixth person can win because i mean there is still a possibility of of a sixth person to win like straight up for sure jordan ashburn very capable of winning josh string very capable of winning. Johnny Girard. Not sure what's been going on with Johnny. I thought we'd see him more up front. Um, I think he might be dealing with an injury as well. But, I mean, those guys could come out swinging on any given day and grab a win. So, just something to keep an eye on, something to look out to. But so far, nobody's won two races this year. Grant Baylor, as we mentioned, gets the big win on the weekend. Um, We did put up a YouTube video, so if you haven't seen our YouTube video yet, the raw race highlights of Camp Coker, you can kind of see the way the race progresses in that. That was all shot in chronological order, so that was as the race was developing. That was as I saw the race. I need to start like saying the laps into the camera so I can put the laps and maybe the mile markers or something on the track so you can follow along with it better and see that the way that the, the track develops and that the race develops. So that is the way that um, that whole thing went down. Completely lost my train of thought there for a second. Oh, so we see Grant Baylor kind of buried in the back of the pack. like, And and not a dig at Grant by any means. I don't even think it would come off that way until I put the disclaimer out that it's not one. But this year we've seen Grant in the back and kind of not getting the best start. And then a lot of times he'll chug forward late in the race. That's what Grant's always been known for. So... This race started out like nothing out of the the ordinary. Like, 
Grant was towards the back. You can see it on the on the videos how far back he was. And he starts picking one person off, picking the next person off, picking the next person off. Next thing you know, Grant's up in that number two spot. And then him and Craig kind of separated themselves pretty early on and uh, were just out there riding together. Or once Grant got up into that number two spot and then they went back and forth. Grant made the pass for the lead and never really looked back after that. Um they still did stay close. Like every time we saw them, they were close, and then there was a big gap back to the number three spot. Um, so you you could see that whole thing develop. And I say big gap using that term loosely. Uh, I guess it was two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes was back to the number three spot of Ben Kelly. But like standing out there filming, you can kind of get get a a feel for how the race is progressing as far as the time in between shots time in between riders coming so um yeah those guys got out front and i mean they were both pushing each other and uh yeah grant was able to gap some time there in those last couple laps um craig holds on strong gets second place so craig looking really good in this championship like i said second place 110 points um he's been on the podium at three out of five rounds with a fifth and a fourth to back those ones up. So um, Craig's coming out swinging, man. And I think he's got a lot more confidence in him now, and especially after getting that win and now being a podium guy, being right in the hunt of this championship. Last year, rookie season, he ends up in the hunt of the championship after Ben Kelly gets hurt, after Stu Baylor gets hurt, after all that stuff happened. And then that was a, a completely different situation. It's like, hey, man, like new to the class, trying to figure out what's going on. Got a battle with Jordan Ashburn. Got a battle with Trevor Bollinger. But now he went through all that. He learned from that. He grew from that opportunity that or that situation that he was putting in last year and had a good offseason, had a good training camp, and then comes out and has success this year with everybody out on the track. So um, Craig's got to be feeling in a really good spot where he's at. Ben Kelly, just as he got up on the podium and was talking about, saying, hey, we knew that we were starting behind the eight ball this year. We knew that we had this leg injury. We knew that we had this shoulder injury. We knew that it was going to take some time to get back to where we were last year when we were dominating every single race. And – Everything's going right on track according to plan, just like Ben Kelly said up on the podium. As we mentioned, the points leader, and he's kind of done it in a in a fashion where it's not loud, it's not flashy, but Ben Kelly's never been loud, he's never been flashy. He goes out, does what he has to do, does his job, and goes home. And what I mean by that, he's got one round, or he's got one win, that was down in Florida, um, where Ben Kelly traditionally always does good and comes off the track looking like, he was out for a trail ride while everyone else is laid over dying. Um, so, But, I mean, starts the year off with a second, then goes to a win, gets on the podium still with a third, has a quote-unquote bad race, finishes fifth at the last race. That's his worst That's his worst finish and his only time off the podium this year. And he gets on the podium once again um, yesterday with a third-place finish to regain that white plate, that points lead in that XC1 class. But... It'd be it'd be cool to hear from Ben and see like, hey, is this where you expected? Are you right on track? Is there something else that you need to do? And um, just kind of hear from from Ben from his own words of, of where he's at. But talking about on the podium, as he mentioned, coming back from the injury and um, just riding like he knows how to ride and really gaining that confidence, gaining that momentum. And then you you get these six rounds out of the way, and then all of a sudden you got a two, uh, actually seven rounds seven rounds before summer break, and then maybe eight. Is there eight rounds before summer break? We're at five. Who's your six? Penton, seven. Snowshoe, eight. Is there another – is there a West Virginia round or something before – anyway – Regardless of the fact, slowly picking the way and getting better and better and better, feeling better and better and better, getting stronger, stronger, stronger. And then you got two months to heal up, knowing what you did at the beginning of the season, seeing where you're at, seeing what you need to do, getting that time off the bike to recover, and then come back second half of the season swinging. And so, I mean, this is going to be a battle that's going to go down to the wire this year. Obviously, five winners, five rounds. We've got a tight points race up at the front. Um, Stu, we've seen Stu have a couple throwaway races in previous years and still be right in that championship hunt all the way down to the wire. So while he did have a couple bad results that he, I'm sure he didn't want by any means, um, well, this one was an eighth and then he had a fourth. So he's been, uh, on the podium all but two rounds as well. But 
even though he is 14 points back, 15 points back, that's nothing. Guys, that's that's one you can make that back in one race. You can legit make that back in one race. Um so, like I said, this thing is going to come down to the wire. Grant Baylor, 6-6-6-8 win. That's been his season so far. So, if he can capture that and keep that momentum going, same thing. These points gaps between winning and third place, winning and second place, it's huge. So, anyone can get in this thing. Jordan Ashburn, still in this thing, in that number five spot. Ricky Russell, he's still in this thing as well. Everyone's still in it. But, um, yeah, so... That is how this race progressed over the weekend. So Grant Baylor grabs a win, holds on to it, gets the win. Some controversy, some controversy, if you will, going on at the finish line. So this was the first race in recent memory. And by like, I mean distant recent memory. In quite some time, maybe ever, that I missed the finish of the race. So I was out filming. The battle was so tight between Craig and Grant. There was this one spot right around the nine-mile marker that I thought, hey, if I don't stick around for third place, don't stick around for XC2 for sure, but just grab first and second place, Grant and Craig, I think I can get from there and get back to the finish line in time. Well, I did that. I shot those two. Took off across the field. I went the wrong way, made a wrong turn, so I couldn't get across the little creek or the muddy section. So then I had to backtrack, go all the way back up around the three-mile marker, come out the opposite side of the property. Long story short, got to the finish line, and the race was already over, but I see there was some stuff going on. I walk over, seems like some commotion, seems like some yelling. So I run up there with the camera. You can see that in the YouTube video. I see Tim Cotter and Grant Baylor exchanging words. It didn't sound like a pleasant conversation. It didn't sound like, hey, congratulations, uh, hey man, great track. Thanks for having us. Was not that kind of conversation. It was not a good conversation. Um, Grant has his rear fender sticking straight up in the air. His jersey says Baylor. His fender is pointing north. You can put two and two together, figure out what just happened there. And so we hear him, and like I said, they weren't happy with each other, and Grant is asked to move his bike off the track in – I don't know how much more colorful words it got or whatever, but that's what happened. He went to turn his bike around. When he went to turn his bike around, I guess some sand flew. I don't know. It is what it is. It could go either way. But um, that created more controversy. So coming off the track, man, uh, come to find out, I guess instead of beating around the bush, Grant Baylor came off the track, finished the race, went through the tent, went over the scoring line, race is over, we're off the race course. We're getting off the race course. And apparently he dumped his clutch and looped her out for the fans. You know what I mean? Giving the people what they want. And um, that was not very uh, appreciated, given the way that that stuff went down at the first round when Stu broke the scoring system. So I think that's what started the whole thing. Um Dan Jaros, that's what I was looking at real quick. He's the one that sent that video. So the the video of Grant looping out in our YouTube video, the 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 highlight video, that was sent by Dan Jaros, uh, D Jaros twenty two. So appreciate that. Like I said, I wasn't at the the finish line, so I didn't get it. So he sent it to the to the DMs at OTP. I asked him, hey, can I post this? Because we've talked about this the past couple weeks. That's what you do. But, um, yeah, he told me to go ahead and post it. So that was the way that we got to see it. So loop the bike out. That didn't make anybody happy because, as we know, Stu at round one took out the scoring system, ended up with a $1,000 fine. So from what I gather from combining what I heard myself and then what was talked about around the the, the finish line afterwards, I guess it was, it was told to Grant, hey, that's a $1,000 fine. You pretty much knew it was going to be a $1,000 fine. Um, get your bike out of the way. When he turns the bike away, I guess some sand, some roost, goes flying. Not intentional at all. You can see that in the video. I think he's just turning around, frustrated, happy, all sorts of emotion. And then from there, it went to, hey, maybe the win is going to be taken away from Grant. And um, so, uh, yeah. Sorry chasing squirrels in my brain about where to go with this story so then that whole thing happens but then we hear that craig delong might be getting docked for an issue with pit crew and and team transportation so and then Stu was on the live feed saying that everyone in xc1 cut 
and say, get ready, boys. So then now is everyone in XC1 going to be docked a lap? So standing at the finish line, it's like, man, we don't know who won. Like, we saw Grant come in first. We saw Craig come in second. But is that going to be what the final results say? And, I mean, there might be rulings that come out this week. I don't know. But they proceeded as it was. They did the podium as the finish line came in. But, yeah, I mean, to, to the best of my knowledge, this might still be up in the air. I think when the, when the stew thing came out, what was that, Thursday or Friday when they released it? Well, I still never saw a release from it, like an actual penalty report. But they changed it in the results on the website um, like days later. So these are – dare I say, provisional results because the way this thing is going, we don't know what's going to happen. Look at Bryce Neal. I think Bryce Neal, I should have went back and watched it. I didn't. I'm sorry. I get a lot of things about quads, like covering quads. I don't know enough about them. Uh, I struggle finding the time to do this. I think this whole studio setup is going to help a lot with OTP. Maybe we can get into quads one day, but I didn't go back and, and check it, but I heard that Bryce Neal won by like three and a half minutes, and then all of a sudden some videos surfaced which that's a whole other story in and of itself about him taking a line that was questionable. And I heard some people say two feet over. I heard some people say four feet over. Whatever the case, he was off of the track and he was docked a position. So what I'm wondering is how that one gets changed so quickly. But on the bike side, it lingers. So who knows? We'll see what happens um, in, in years past. We've seen the podium get handed out or the awards get handed out the podium presentation done gcc rule says once that happens all results are final we have seen that get taken back and results get changed we've seen points get changed we've seen fines get laid out we've seen positions change we've seen positions not change so who knows um there was a lot of rumblings and bumblings i will say that and uh yeah so who knows what's going to happen. So Grant Baylor takes a win. Craig DeLong in second place. Ben Kelly in the number three spot overall. Fourth place overall, Rui Barbosa. Catching some momentum is Rui Barbosa. Um, come through the finish line, man. Let me tell you something. You know when Rui Barbosa has a good race because he comes off the track and just holds that thing pegged. Like you can hear it from a mile away from when he finishes the race, holds that thing on the rev limiter. When he gets up on the podium, holds that thing on the rev limiter. But just overcome with emotion. Um, Rui gets me fired up, man. You hear him talk and just how appreciative he is. He's up here from from Chile racing, chasing a dream on the other side of the world from where his home country is. And now we're seeing him have that success and his confidence is building. And now he even took the points lead. He's got the points lead by 12 points um, after this past weekend. So just to see the emotion, see the excitement, see the happiness of, of Rui, um, that was really cool. But, yeah, he comes through fourth place overall, taking his second straight XC2 Pro bike win. Um, so that was cool to see. Jordan Ashburn, Top five, uh, round out top five overall, fourth place, XC1. Josh Strang, sixth place overall. Um, so what does that make him? Sixth place, seventh place in XC1? But Mason Simmons gets his first podium. I believe it's his first podium. Second place, P2, XC2. Another guy that uh, we talked about the injury bug earlier. We talked about putting it all together. Mason Simmons is a guy that has the raw speed. Mason Simmons is a guy that we were warned about last season coming into it, and then he got bit by the injury bug, got hurt a couple different times throughout the season last year. Um, Still on that trail, Jester's KTM coming into this year, and now he has this success. Second place on the day, seventh place overall um, is Mason Simmons on that overall podium. Another dude couldn't be more stoked for him. Um, Cool to see that whole thing come together, especially with that crew that they ride with. I mean, Will Reardon grabbing the hard enduro win uh, a couple weeks ago. Gus Reardon having the points lead um, heading into this round and grabbing the win two rounds ago. Uh, Josh Strang, everything that Josh has accomplished, GNCC overall champion, sprint enduro champion, ISD world champion. Um, On the podium, second place a couple rounds ago was Josh Strang down in Georgia. Uh, Lyndon Snodgrass. Watching that whole progression that he made last year to win that XC2 championship 
um, throughout last year. Like these are all the guys that are all riding and training together. Everywhere you look out of that Alls Ranch, there's success coming out of that place. Um, so Mason Simmons uh, putting it together, second place on the day. Um, stoked for him. Cody Barnes. Cody Barnes was another guy I talked to on the starting line before the race, talking about needing a good race, talking about putting it all together. And he goes out there, Mr. Consistency, it seems to be, um, this year is, is Cody Barnes. But um, especially these last couple rounds anyway. So three straight podiums now for Cody Barnes. Third, second, and now third again on the overall podium. Once again, fourth place in points is Cody Barnes. So that was your uh, your top three XC2 riders. And then we look down at the XC3 class. And um, it was Toby Cleveland taking the win once again in that one. So your fastest XC3 rider, Jack Walker. Um, I think two years off of mini bikes. I think he moved off of mini bikes into XC3 last year, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, he comes out, gets second place over former XC3 champion Zach Hayes, who ended up rounding out the XC3 podium with a third place spot. We'll take a look now at our top amateur, which that's another whole thing. I wish that there was a way to cover that better. I wish there was more that we could put into that. Uh, top amateur battle because man there is a ton of fast riders that are battling out for that that top am honors every single week and it seems like that keeps changing each week as well um this week brayden nolette grabs the top am honors winner of the 250a class nick defeo the t-rex himself in the number two spot as far as top ams are concerned and then caleb baltimore um, second place, four stroke, a lights, third place, top am Nick DeFeo won that four stroke, a lights class, um, Bolton broth right there in the mix of things. We've seen him on that top am podium, uh, 20th place overall, fourth overall amateur, uh, second place in that 250A class was Bolton Broth. But, I mean, we see these guys battling. JoJo Cunningham came back right where he left off at the last round and uh, got on that, that top end podium. Jason Tino's up there. Tyler Palmer um, battling for those those top amateur spots. Uh, Chase Colville, Trevor Maley. Like, there's so many of them that are battling for those things. Um, and we see that get more and more competitive uh, each and every single race as well, just like we're seeing all the, the competitiveness throughout the rest of the pro classes as well. Speaking of which, Rachel Archer goes out and takes the WXC win once again, extends her points lead in that WXC class, um, battled back and forth with Rachel Guttish there early on in the race, and then once they got through the lappers, uh, Rachel was able to, Rachel Archer, I guess they're, they're both Rachels, was able to pull away a little bit. So Rachel Archer takes the win, Rachel Guttish in the number two spot, and Corey Steed in in that number three spot, which from what I understand, Corey Steed had a had a pretty good digger herself in a, a crash out there. So still ends today, third place in that WXC class. But uh, Rachel Archer takes that win and extends her points lead. Let me double check, see if I missed any storylines. Um, I wish I could tell you guys to let me know in the comments about any storylines that I missed, but I can't really keep up with the comments. So it looks like there are some comments going on. Let's, uh, let's check and see what we got here. Oh, uh, T's and P's also to, um, Thad Duvall. Thad Duvall right before the race mentioned that he had broke his scaphoid in his wrist, um, right before the, um, Sorry, I just got thrown for a loop right here. Right before the race, announced that he had broken the scaphoid in his wrist and that he was going to be out, so T's and P's to, to Thad Duvall as well. Um, certainly didn't mean to, to skip over him. Um, Thad, I mean, coming off that injury last year, the broken pelvis, working his way back from that, and then to, to deal with this, it's an absolute bummer to, uh, to see. So I hope he gets healed up um, pretty quick as well. Let's see what we got. Ethan Harwell. Says shout out, shout out Ethan Harwell. Is there something specific? Um, that's what I was ragging my brain about trying to say here. I was like, trying, did I miss something blatantly obvious? Um, but Dave Rudder, appreciate you sharing it. Um, run it. 
I run it, have 8.5K followers. Hope it helps get you more views. Oh, cool. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, Thad didn't race because of a wrist injury. Tight, high-speed track that was a ton of fun, says Dan. It did look like the track was pretty fast. So cool seeing Grant Baylor shred like that. I agree. Brad Lackey look seems to be working for him. Third place for Kelly and had to stop and change a route. How did I forget that? Um, Thomas Steyer. Good point. How did I forget that? So I wasn't listening to the live feed. Obviously, was out running around filming stuff. Someone said, like I was waiting for Ben in third, and someone was, was standing, one of the team guys was like, oh, Ben's not going to be here third. He had to stop and change a tire. I said, what? He said, yeah, he had to change his rear wheel, so he's not going to be in third. We're sitting there. Who comes around the corner? Ben Kelly. I was like, I thought he said he had to change a wheel. I was like, I heard he had to change a wheel. Come to find out, I think it was on the live feed. I, I think. I'm not sure. But Ben Kelly stops, changes a rear wheel. Oh, they were talking about it. I remember him talking about it. But, yeah, so stops, changes the, changes the rear wheel, doesn't lose hardly any time at all. So it shows you that KTM team, they had no heads up. They didn't know that he was coming in on the radio. He just came into the pit and said, hey, Blew out a bead, need a new rear wheel. So then the KTM team jumps on it. They get that thing jacked up. They get that wheel changed and back off onto the track. So um, to hold on to third, especially to overcome that, grab a quick wheel change, pretty insane. Can't believe that I forgot to mention that. Um, Dan also says nine rounds of snowshoe, so correct me there. Appreciate it. Um, 16th overall was Toby Cleveland. Was he really that high? Dang, 16th overall, Toby Cleveland leading the way in that XC3 class. He's ripping, dude. Toby Cleveland's been on fire in that XC3 class. Um, Yeah, I saw the feature on Racer TV of Toby Cleveland, actually. I heard it while I was out there. I was at the beta rig uh, when we were filming pit stops, and I heard it then, but then I went back and watched the broadcast and, and saw the the right, or the feature on Toby Cleveland, which I thought was really cool, especially spotlighting, like, the XC3 guys. Um, it was cool to see that and hear kind of his background story. How did the shot of the leaders while you were moving near the end of the race, how did you get the shot of the leaders? Oh, the the moving shot, the one that I posted as a as a reel. Um, so that one, it's like a tight section. It, it's always a cool section to shoot, whether you're at the end of it because the pines are right in a row or whether you're doing a moving shot, whatever you want to do. It's always a cool place to to shoot. This year, it was at the three-mile marker. So there was actually a gravel road that runs beside that portion of the track. And that track is a straightaway through these pines, but it is bumpy. It gets whooped out. There's roots. You got to stay in between the trees, all of that stuff. So riding a perfectly groomed gravel road, you can keep up with the fastest guys in the world as they're riding that part of the track. And it's still everything I can do to keep up with them, even though I'm on a gravel road with no bumps or anything in it. But actually, I had my cell phone in my left hand, and I've been riding my Beta 390RR at the races, which bike is awesome, dude. Um, that that whooped out track. Obviously, it's different riding it for three hours than diving in and, and getting to a spot on the track. But, dude, it felt awesome. Like, you can flick that thing around. It it feels light and nimble while you're riding it and while you're moving it. And uh, the power of it is pretty sick, too. But that's besides the point. I was on my Beta 390, and I would see them coming up through the field. So then I just rode along the, the track next to them and held my phone out and held it pretty dang still, all things considered. Um, but, yeah, so I had that follow shot. And then by the time Grant got around that corner, I had to slow down so I didn't – eat it and slide out on that corner. But then as soon as I did that, I looked back and Craig was right behind him. So it just so happened there was like a perfect natural little pan back to Craig DeLong and I followed him the rest of the way down till they got into that open field section. So it ended up being a, uh, a really cool shot. Um, what happened to Bubs? Notice Taylor got his – or Baylor got his break. Sorry if I missed it. So Bubs had a clutch go out. Um, so a mechanical issue there. Um, clutch went out, fried it. They couldn't get the bike back going. And um, I guess from, from what I understand, I haven't talked to anybody about it, but just context clues and, and watching and seeing what was going on. Um, I think Stu, I think they run a different back brake than normal. Like, I don't think it's a stock back brake caliper um, or whatever it is. So 
when Stu came in with no rear brakes and they were getting him back going, Bubs' bike was sitting there, so already DNF for the race. So that's why you saw on the Racer TV program they started robbing the, the rear brake system off of Bubs' bike. So he was already there. It's not like they ended Bub's race early to, to put it on, on Stu's bike, but um, Bub's is already in there for bike-related issues, and then that is why uh, the bike was sitting there, so they were able to just grab that rear brake system and um, and get it over to, to Stu's bike to get him back on, on the track to try to salvage some points. Um, obviously, it sounds like Stu was dealing with a lung infection, so um, risk versus reward ended up trying or deciding to call a spade a spade on the day and uh pulled off later in the race but other than that man i think we hit all the storylines from from the weekend i think so anyway real quick we'll move out west it was the uh the west hair scramble round two mra jacksonville i'm assuming not jacksonville florida guys i'm trying to learn the west coast stuff Give me – obviously, it's not Jacksonville, Florida. That was a joke. But I'm trying to learn the West Coast stuff. Need to learn more about it. I want to get out to the West Coast and go some, go to some races, get my finger on the pulse, and uh, and see how those things run so we can cover them a little bit better. But hopefully we can bring you some, some coverage um, as well, kind of like we were talking about before. But checking the overall, checking in with the, the round two of the West Hair Scramble Championship, which – a lot of focus, a lot of effort, a lot of factory support goes into the West Hair Scramble Series. Dante Oliveira, a member of the ISDE team um, over the past few seasons, grabs the overall win, factory KTM guy. Um, Giacomo Ridondi ends up getting the number two spot on a gas gas. And then Joe Wasson, a fellow that we've talked about several times on the show because he is a beta family member factory beta rider out west joe wasson rounds out the overall podium in third with another beta rider right behind him zane roberts ended up grabbing that number four spot on uh on the beta machine and then looking at the 250 class Jaden donners on a yamaha grabbed the 250 pro class win tyler vore who we've also seen on ISDE club teams, um, second place in that 250 Pro class. And then Leighton Smale would take the final podium position in that 250 Pro class. Mason Ottersberg on the Sherco, fourth place, just off the podium in that Pro 2 class. So um, I know we talked about it before. Mason, if you're listening right now, hit me up. Let's get West Coast Wednesdays going. We need to talk about it. Because uh, obviously... I have no idea what's going on out there. But I'd like to know. I'm trying to follow it. Trying to grow the sport. Trying to get, uh, get my, like I said, finger on the pulse of the off-road world as a whole. So that is the way the pro classes shook out out at the West Hair Scrambles. We'll check in with our pro women. Michaela Nielsen grabbed the, the women's pro class win. Ava Silvestri in the number two spot. And then Tara Geiger on a JCR Honda. Rounds out the women's pro class podium. So there you have it. East Coast to West Coast. Got them covered. Got them dialed in. Um, yeah. So I think that's it. I don't think that there's um, too many things. Savage Dad or Rowdy Dad. Savage camera work. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, let me know what you guys think about the um, the the videos. This time... I didn't do the whole documentary style thing because I found myself walking around the pro pits just kind of talking to everybody, catching up with everybody. And uh, by the time I realized that it was time to go racing, I hadn't filmed anything yet. So I said, you know what? We're just going to film the race. Old school. Raw highlights. And then it kind of worked out because I ended up spending most of the night with uh, with Nelco in the hospital in Florence. So I uh, tried to edit that thing on my way home was a little bit late getting it up man i didn't get it up till this morning so if you have watched it thank you let me know what you think of it if you have not yet watched it um go check it out it's on our youtube channel now the camp coker pro bike raw highlights but yeah here we go first first one done in the studio right here on main street lowell north carolina um pumped hopefully we can grow the podcast a lot hopefully uh I'm investing in some equipment to get a proper studio set up this Thursday. Be on the lookout. Our first 
in studio guest. This is gonna be Thursday. Um so that'll obviously be oh crap. If it's Thursday, it's gonna have to be during the day. But hey, these people they ride dirt bikes for a living. We can move some schedules around, move some riding around and, and do a live podcast. I gotta fish a tournament Thursday night. Sorry about it. We gotta fish two a month in order to qualify for the championship, so no choice. But tentatively, per our conversations earlier, our first in studio guest will be Thursday. Uh this was our first in studio show. So live right here. Um YouTube's gonna be our new destination, our new home that we're working towards. So if you were already not part of our 250,000 subscribers right here on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're not one of our 500,000 followers on TikTok, go follow us on TikTok. Um, only 25,000 followers on Instagram, not as impressive as those two bigger numbers, but follow us there. Instagram is where I post all the updates at. So that is, uh, the, that's my favorite social media. It is the easiest to use. I think it's the easiest to see. So anytime that there's an update or something going on with the show, you can find it right there on Instagram. It is 11 o'clock at night on the East Coast. Thank you all if you are still up this late watching me. Thank you all if you are listening to this at work tomorrow or in the morning or wherever you may listen to this, whenever you may listen to it. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for supporting OTP. We're going to have new merch drops coming up soon. As soon as I get my uh, my stuff over here all up and operational, got a couple new designs that we're going to drop in the On The Pipe Podcast store. And it's not just going to be stuff that says On The Pipe Podcast on the front of it. We got it. We've been selling those for six years. Everyone who wanted one, you already got one. If you didn't get one, go to onthepipepodcast.shopify.com or just go to onthepipepodcast.com. There's a link there. Whatever. Uh, get yourself one, but we're going to have some new shirts coming up, some new collaborations coming up and, um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here. Show gets better from here. Sorry, this one stunk, but, uh, appreciate you and we'll see you next time right here on on the pipe podcast.